Hey, welcome to Lead a Life Uncommon, specifically for therapists and coaches who are out there busy changing lives. This podcast is going to help you with all things business, selling, marketing, coaching, delivery, social media, speaking gigs, all the good stuff. And it's going to help you with your own thoughts, your own thinking, your own behaviors, your own limitations. So buckle up, get ready, and let's go. Hey, uh, welcome to uh, this episode about making niching simple, niche made simple. Here's 12 questions I'm going to have you ask yourself if you just want to get clarity around niching. Now we've talked about niching several different times. Um, I think that it's one of those things that sometimes people, when they're moving forward in their business, they question, am I picking the right niche? Have I picked the right niche? Oh my God, I've picked the wrong niche. And I want to offer to you, when you get done answering these questions, it's going to help solidify it. Number one. And number two is nothing is forever. You don't, you can change niches, but here's the biggest glaring problem. Let's just start with this. When people decide that they want to change niches, what happens a lot of time is they've actually not done the work to master selling, marketing, delivering their plan, their systems, their mindset, and their personal life. Those seven pillars, which are critical to success in business. And so they've launched something. It didn't go as well. They didn't master their sales call. So it didn't go well. So they now interpret the niche is wrong. These people are not buying when in reality, it's your skills. So before you just throw it all away, because you've chosen a niche for a reason, before you throw it all away, listen to this episode, it's going to help you. Okay. So the question really also is, are you really stuck or are you just not, are you afraid to, um, make a decision. What if the answer to your niche is literally as close as your eyelashes, right under your nose? Like, you know, like your pinky toenail. What if it's like that close to you? Look, I can guarantee that I can help you nail your niche in 10 minutes or less. So get on a call with me, marybicknell.com slash call with Mary. I'm opening up this to you for a quick call to help you nail your niche. First of all, Niche, niche, niche. I don't know. Okay. They say that um, the riches are in the niches. So, uh, you know, we all want to be rich. So let's go with that. When you think about what a niche is, really, it's it's who are you serving and how are you serving them? Or how are you helping them um, and who are you helping? Serving, helping, you get to choose. Here's the thing I want you to consider. What if currently you you are your own best client? First of all, if you're in the helping industry, you're a coach or you're a therapist or you're a consultant or you're here with me listening to this podcast, you are someone who wants to help people. So the question becomes, are you leading by example and being your own best client? Sometimes that's what we mean by the niche is like literally right under your nose. It's your, uh, as close as your eyelashes because you being your own best client you understanding how you feel, you understanding what the problem is, you having created a methodology to provide a result. Boom, there's your niche. So when we think about niching, what's your personal growth? If you're your own best client, do you work on yourself daily? Do you have a mentor or a coach or a support that you value that relationship? Because you know, when shit gets hard, you want to have somebody walking the path with you right? That's what you're doing with your clients. So if you're being your own best client, you need to sip your own Kool-Aid and believe in the power of having a mentor, a guide, a coach. Are you writing down your methodology, my friends, and actually understanding that this is your intellectual property? This is your intellectual, your thinking property. Have you really contemplated that? Are you going out and are you telling people, hey, I have a solution to what ails you, sister? Do you tell people that you can help them and are you showing up? My niche, as you know, is helping therapists and mental health and wellness professionals transition into coaching completely and then master the selling and scaling of their coaching business through things like speaking gigs, Facebook ads, or ads in general, and automation automation so you get your damn life back. Automate your business 
so that you can do the helping work that you love to do. So it's the method, all the methods that I teach in my business, um, intellectual property, my methodologies are methods I've used to create over a million dollars in just the last couple of years. My method is the truth. I'm my own best client. Now, do I fall off the track? Yes. Are there days I might not like sit first and write out all my goals and journal? Of course, I'm human also. And then I get right back on track with my own coach. I have a one-on-one coach and I have my own business coach. And of course, I have a collective of peers. But when you use this methodology that I teach and my clients implement it and they get results, just like your method. Now, here's what I want to, I want to shake you up a little bit. Some of you I know are thinking, well, I've got to go learn something new. I want to offer to you, you already have the answers within you. You have the answers now. I want to offer to you that Maslow, Gottman, Martha Beck, look, they all just created stuff out of their minds. Their intellectual property is from their mind. Tony Robbins, that what, the number one self guru in the world, you know, he just read, he will say, and he has told this for decades, I just read a bunch of other people's stuff and kind of mashed it up and put it together and made my own thing. He developed his motivational speaking style by watching Jim Rowan, who, you know, was one of the old school original like marketers. He added in, you know, Robbins added in some of his own like studies around behavior and psychology. Hello, therapist, coach. Hello, coaches. You know these things. So are you stuck? Or are you simply not making a decision? I think that people say they can't figure out what their niche is because they're afraid to make a decision. Because here's what I believe to be true after working with hundreds of women through the years. You know who you want to help. You know. And why do I know you know this? Because you know exactly who you never want to help again. So if you're in my world, right, you're a therapist, you're a coach, you're a helper, you're a clinician, practitioner, you're in the mental health or wellness industries of some sort, the emotional wellness industry, the personal development industry, and you know who you don't want to work with, you know who you don't want to be around, you know this. So if you can ask the question, who's the exact opposite of that? I think that a lot of times your fears come with um, wanting to nail this niche and think, oh my God, this is a lifetime decision. I want to remind you that I started my business nine years ago being a relationship coach. And that soon went to, oh my God, I don't want to talk about relationships forever. What I do want to talk about is women's financial, emotional, and time independence. I want to help you be completely unemployed so you never work for anybody and you only work for yourself and you be your own best boss, by the way. That's a side note. So picking a niche, learning how to market, sell, and deliver it is going to actually give you more information than you just spinning out telling yourself, I don't know, I'm stuck. I Stop saying that, by the way. Stop saying I'm stuck. When you say that, your brain will seek to prove you correct. So instead, use your prefrontal cortex and get into question mode. Ask your brain the questions, and I'm getting ready to give you 12 questions now. Hey, listen, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while and you haven't gone and written a review, given a um, five star, or asked, you know, posted in the review section and asked me a question, please do. I want to be able to create more content that you are loving, that you are using, and is making a difference for you. So here's 12 questions for you to really get your brain thinking. Remember, asking our brain questions gets our prefrontal cortex firing. It it puts us in control of, of our brain now is seeking answers. Just like when you say, I'm stuck, and you make that as a blanket statement, your brain will seek affirmation to that. So here we go. Ready? Number one, what would literally have you so inspired to jump out of bed every morning to do good work in the world, to do work that mattered, to have you feeling like your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience, your story, your, your, you overcoming the thing? and sharing that with the world. What would that look like? 
I know many of you dread getting up because you may not have, um, or historically you dreaded getting up because you didn't do work you loved anymore. What if you gave yourself permission today to only work with the best clients? And then how can you be your own best client? Number two, what was the number one reason? Like, let's get back to the number one reason you decided to get into the helping industry in the first place as a coach, as a therapist, as a clinician, as a practitioner, as an OT, PT, as some helper in the your yogi, Reiki, like all the helping industries within the personal development, personal growth, emotional and mental health arenas. What was the reason that you decided to get into that? Do you remember that feeling? How can you tap back into that feeling memory within your body? And what was the emotion that had you wanting to become a helper, a clinician, a therapist? Me, I remember so clearly, <clears throat> I am um, I have a degree in interior design and I remember so clearly the recession hit in the 90s. And meanwhile, I was doing a lot of volunteer work. I was doing Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. I was doing a lot of food lobbying at um, the state capitol in Annapolis, in Maryland. The state capitol is in Annapolis. And I remember thinking like, I want to be a voice for people who don't have a voice. I want to be the stand for them. I want to be the advocate for them. I want to help them. So I went back to school and I got a BSW and MSW and of course later my license. And then I went on to do all kinds of things in the helping industry as a clinician, as a social worker. I worked in hospitals. I worked in managed care. So I worked client work. I did behind the scenes. I did every single thing. I, I've never once had somebody say, did you do this? And I was like, yes, I did it. DHS, statistical analysis. Like, God, I did it all because I wanted to help people. And what happened is I decided then to transition into coaching because coaching made an impact. I had a therapist, a therapist who had transitioned to coaching and she made an impact on my life. And I thought, ah, there's something about this. I want to be also in charge of who I work with. So what do you remember about that? Do you remember that emotional state, that feeling, that thought that created the, like, yes, I want to help people. Because I know that somewhere along the way, my friends, you've lost that a little bit. Number three, what's your story? What's your overcoming something story? Your overcoming something story is valuable. I like to teach this concept, what I call what's personal is universal. So no matter what's happened to you, my friend, and you've created the methodology that allowed you to get to the other side of it, there's other people just like you who need that. Now, I will say, that there's stories that have happened to me that I don't talk about. So we have multiple stories. We have multiple stories that could be, and I'm air quoting for you, your niche. Let me give you a couple of stories to give you an example, because what happens is you've overcome lots of things, my friends, in your life. Not all of those things you want to re-experience and work with people. And that's completely fine. So now I help women make more money doing work that they love. I help therapists transition into coaching, clinicians into coaching. I help you scale an online coaching business through speaking and Facebook ads and automation. So you get your damn life back and you make money. You make a lot more money. Why? Because I, I moved out before I graduated high school and I want... I always want to be able to be financially independent. No matter what happens with my husband, it's important to me. And my clients value their own financial independence. Okay. So that's part of my story. And I, there's more to it, right? Like I had bad marriages and I was with a controlling husband who kept all the money. I didn't know where any of it was. The bills went to his office. I was one of those women who like literally didn't know anything. I didn't even know like what the mortgage payment was. Somebody, I offloaded my financial success and responsibility to someone else. So that's why I'm so adamant about having women have their own financial success independent of anyone else. That's a game changer. So that's one of my stories. But, you know, I am 18 years sober. I have 18 and a half years sober. 
So that's another whole story. But you know what? That niche, I don't want to work with people who and help them overcome their drinking because you know why? I don't want to be back in that story. But what gets me out of bed every day is I'm my own best client when it comes to success in my business, using my methods, teaching and coaching my methods. So I'm doing the work and I'm, I'm steps ahead of my ideal client, but that's that the story of financial independence is like, that's the story. Not the, I was molested as a kid story. Not the, I've been sober 18 years story. Not, I've been a stepmother story. There's plenty of other things I've ever come. So what is the story for you, an overcoming story that you want to live out? And this is your commitment. Here's some other examples. I know women who have lost like 50 pounds. They never want to talk about it again. And I know other, like some of my, my friends, they've lost a lot of weight and now they teach that. Now they coach that because that's their life. My business is an extension of my personality and who I am, just like you. So number four, what problem are you great at solving for yourself and others? This is back to the overcoming the story. Number five, the solution to that problem is your method, right? We're talking about your intellectual property. So really, have you written down what are the steps, maybe not more than five steps, to get you from one side of the raging river of your problem to the other? Have you written that down? Have you really looked at that? Number six, have you used this method for, with other people? Now, I know that if you're here, you've probably already have a lot of, my clients call them Mary-isms. You probably have a lot of isms that, you know, you help your clients with. You probably are already walking through pe people through a method or that you might not even be conscious of. I'm going to challenge you to start sitting down and think, oh, I say the same thing every time to clients. I say that I, I give them the same exercise. This is the where we always start the process. You're probably already doing it. And does it have some proof? Do you, have you had clients go, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my God, I've really transformed. Oh my God, thank you, Mary. Oh my, write that stuff down. That's your method. Number seven, answer this question. How do you know it worked? How will you know that it has stuck? One of the things I like to teach clients is this concept of lifetime return on investment. And specifically when you're thinking about an offer and your method and selling people, the value is not just for that one hour, not even that six months working together. It's the lifetime. It's changing habits, changing thoughts, changing emotions. That's lifetime. And that's how we price things, by the way. That's another conversation. So I want to ask you, if you saw one of your clients in a year from now, how will you know it worked and stuck? So maybe you've kept 50 pounds off for the last several years. Maybe you have a new relationship and you're happily married. Maybe you are having the best sex of your life. Maybe you are making more money. So let me give you an example. One of my clients, Danielle, she and I work together and I like to check in like, Hey, what's going on? What's going on with you? And she's like, by the way, I've lost 40 pounds because of my confidence. I've increased my rates. And she rattled off a few other things. I've had other clients that are like, you're never going to believe I now I'm buying. Actually, this just happened today. A, a former client has bought another piece of property. So building her financial confidence. So it's funny, right? It's like people come in about business development, but part of business development, my friends, is your personal development. So lifetime return is the work you're doing lasting. <coughs> Excuse me. How do you know? Um, who do you know you never want to work with again? That was one of the key things. I can list out people I know I never want to work with again. And not that they're terrible people. It's just like, they're not my vibe. They're not my tribe. They're not my values. It's like what, with 7 billion people on the planet, why would you ever, 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 ever work with anybody you don't want to? Take that in pause. I know what just happened. Your mind said, Mary, you don't understand. I have to because I have to pay the mortgage. My friends, I want to offer to you that you don't have to do that if you set up your business in a way that only attracted the best client. 
there's more than enough people in the world for you to only ever work with people you're thrilled to see on your calendar. Okay, 100%. I mean, think about it, like remove the emotion of like, oh, I don't know, I've got to pay my mortgage. Remove the emotion of it, my friends, and ask yourself from a logical place. Let's just say your niche is, I work with divorced women in midlife. Do you think that there's more than enough over 45-year-old women, women over 45, who are divorced and need to get their sexy back, need to feel good about themselves? Do you think there's more than enough people, those women, that you could make all the money you could ever want to make? And that some of those women need you, but guess what? You don't want to work with them. Yes, is the answer, of course. Um, really have you, and so now I want to give you permission, number eight, excuse me, number nine, really define your best ideal client. Here are some examples. And I go into this more detail with my clients, but think about the traits, the attributes, the personality style of your best client. So not only do they have the problem that you know you can, is a solution that you have the solution to, but like, tell me a little bit more about them. So my clients are driven. They're strong. They have opinions. They know they have something valuable to add to the world. They might be afraid, but they're yes. When they're, they are a woman of integrity, their yes is a yes. Their no is a no. And they're not willing to compromise on their dream, desire, and goal. And so when we work together, even if it's like they're going to go on stage for the first time, or they're, they're doing their first Facebook ad, or they really are, they're, they're like, I hate technology, but they're willing to do the work to learn automation so that they can have hours more in their life. And then eventually, of course, hiring somebody and that's next level. What, what attributes does your best client have? Think about yourself. What kind of, I just described also me. So my best clients are not wimpy finger pointers. That's just not uh, like, that's not my best client. Number 10, do people with this problem value the solution? And are they able to invest? Look, I know that a lot of you are clinicians, social workers, et cetera, listening, and you just want me to tell you how to help all the poor people and make a ton of money. I'm here to tell you to make a lot of money and then write a check for the poor people. I'm here to tell you that I'm not, my job is to help you work with people who want to change. I'm not here to try and help you figure out how to make people do something. So do your ideal client have a bleeding neck problem? Are they like star? Are they thirsty in a desert? Are they a hell yes? Because some of you are trying to sell things that are not a hell yes. Not a like bleeding neck, not a like broken leg and they're trying to run a race. You're trying to sell things like life skills. I have another example for you, but like things that like nobody's waking up at two in the morning and it's cold sweat thinking I need better life skills. But that 50 year old might be waking up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. in a cold sweat, terrified of being alone for the rest of her life after a shitty divorce. And she wants help. She wants to feel good again. She wants to feel vibrant again. She wants to connect with herself. She wants to get her confidence back. She wants to say hell yes to herself, maybe for the first time ever. That's a different client. Um, number 11, why would they choose you? Is it because you've been there? Is it you have a proven track record, record via testimonials? I have hundreds of testimonials. And have you learned to leverage through your marketing, your authority that is built in already with all your education and experience? Number 12 is, here's a good one. This is so good. Is this a problem that's been around for a while? In other words, the demand. So sometimes there's this concept like trying to create demand. Like, no, you, you want to have a niche that already has demand before you even thought about creating your business and will have demand forever. We're not selling typewriters, right? That, that like, there's no demand for a typewriter. What you're talking, there's going to be 50 year old women forever who are divorced and want to feel good again. There's going to be women who have um, struggled with IVF and are desiring to love their life with or without a child forever. There's going to be um, couples that come to you 
that don't want to get divorced, that want to have better sex, there always are going to be a plethora of that. There's always going to be the 37 year old who wants to figure out how to lose the last 10 pounds of baby fat and fit into her size 29 jeans again, always. So it's not about trying to create demand. It's about tapping into the demand that's already there in your niche and learning to articulate your story and how people get to know you. Okay. So you got to enjoy doing the work. You got to believe that there's other people out there that need this. You have to be super clear and concrete. Like I said, divorce coach for midlifers. Like this is so clear. I help divorced empty nesters find for their forever lover. That's pretty clear. As opposed to, I'm a woman's executive functionality and life skills coach. What is that? Nobody's nobody's buying that right? Or I help women feel into the essence of who they are, longing to be so that they, they can experience enlightened empowerment to their fullest potential and radiate that from within. What does that mean? Look, clarity sells. Buyers need to believe in you and your offer and your solution that you're walking your talk. Believers buy. When you're trying to be all fancy, Try and come up with the perfect cutesy name. Fancy fails every single time. So let's end with this. First of all, go through, answer all those 12 questions. Share with me what the answers are. I am dying to hear. Here's a few last tips for you on mistakes and thinking. Sometimes people, um, they're like, I don't want to niche down. I'm going to lose sales. Look. There's no way, my friends, you could help everyone. And it's kind of ridiculous to think that. Let's be real. It's kind of a little arrogant. It's kind of be like, I want to help everyone. I, my goal is to help you master helping the people that are your best clients, not everyone. Okay? People worry about not being a specialist. Uh, or they think that, you know, being a specialist is like, you know, I help 10 year olds to 100 year olds feel good about their life. Like nobody's buying that. Nobody's investing in that. Nobody's waking up at, you know, midnight worrying about this. Your client, the goal with you niching specifically, especially you being your own best client and talking from your story, my friend, is so that your best clients can hear you and they can feel you and they can see you, and there is this unconscious belief that they have that you can help them. Okay? The other thing, too, is if you can't simply share what you do to, like, a five-year-old that gets it, you're being too complicated. Like, if, if people are zoning out, like, literally, and your job is to learn how to say what you do multiple ways. So if you're talking to the five-year-old, you're talking to the 50 year old, you're talking to the 70 year old, you're talking to the 20 year old, but you're a divorce coach for midlifers. They will all understand that. They will all understand that. And finally, I want to end in you're ready now. You don't need anything other than learning how to market, sell, deliver, getting your head on straight, making sure that you're designing your business your life that you love, this is what I want to help you to do, is design your personal life, the lifestyle that you love, the people you want to work with, and that we can build and scale and grow that business so that you can literally lead a life uncommon. That's the goal. So reach out to me, share with me those 12 questions, the answers. I'm looking forward to um, hearing all about it. And make sure if you've not signed up for our upcoming workshop, Oh my God, this is going to be a game changer for you. Um, depending on when you're listening to this. So in October, I'm going to be sharing all the behind the scenes on how to build your authority through speaking. We're going to talk about when you should or shouldn't use ads. And we're going to talk about how to get your life back through automating. These are the things that will change your entire life. Because speaking will put you in front of larger audiences and you need numbers, my friends. You can't just onesie twosie and think that you're ever going to scale like you want. 
I've spoken across stages all across the country. Game changer. Especially when you're sick of, like, who's sick of social media? I love social media, and yet, ugh, I'm personally not on social media all the time. A lot of the things that you see, my friends, are automated. That's how I can, actually, I'm sitting here at my other house, my river house. So if you're watching the video, you can see me just sitting here in a t-shirt with um, a Bigfoot on it, a Portlandy type t-shirt recording this. And then this will all be automated. And um, because I'm getting ready to go out and get on the kayak, I have been watching behind my monitor, a sea lion swimming around. So if you've seen my light, me pop around, if you're watching the video, life changing. You need to also think about when you know your message, it's time to look at ads. You need to be building an email list. You must be building an email list. You don't own different social media platforms, so you need to diversify. So that's what we're going to be talking about in October. I look forward to seeing you. And until next time, remember, be bold. You deserve to lead a life uncommon. Bye now. Hey, how was that? I know that's helpful. You want more of that? I want to invite you to participate in the Therapist Who Coach Mastermind. That's right. As we're launching Therapist Who Coach Academy, the very first opportunity you have is the mastermind. This is for you. If you've been selling coaching, you're ready to scale coaching, you're done being burnout, you're tired of having your feet in both worlds, the mental health and the coaching world, it's time for a shift for you. So reach out directly to me, marybicknell.com slash call with Mary, because we are getting ready to get started with that right now. Our very first call is coming up in the beginning of November. It's a VIP day and all day. Get it done, get it planned, get it organized, get it off your mind and make some decisions kind of day. Schedule a call with me. Let's see if you're fit. And if not, we'll talk about what to do about that. And in the meantime, hey, don't forget, leave a five star. Share with me what inspired you, what gave you a little kick in the ass and what your vision for your own life and business is. It's time for you to be bold and lead a life uncommon. Talk to you soon.